All right, this is uh, Gas Laws Packet Worksheet Number 2, and I'm actually on the second page of Worksheet Number 2. Um, you can follow along on the first page where it talks sort of conceptually about what Boyle's Law tells us. Boyle's Law is the first of three laws that we'll be learning in this Gas Laws Packet. Um, and Boyle's Law tells us the relationship between volume and pressure at a constant temperature. So it's important to remember <clears throat> when we get to the point where we're mixing the, the three different laws together, which won't be for a while still, um, that Boyle's Law is only true when we have a constant temperature, meaning that the temperature we start with and the temperature we end with are the same. Um, and when we have a constant temperature, what Boyle's Law tells us is that volume <clears throat> and pressure are inversely related or inversely, we can say, proportional. And what that means is that when one goes up, the other goes down. Right? This makes sense. Let's imagine that you are holding a container of yogurt, right? And you push on both sides of the container really, really hard. You are increasing the pressure. Pressure is going up, right? So, what happens to the space inside of the yogurt container? Well, that space, or in other words, that volume, goes down. And the practical result is that the yogurt goes all over the place, right? That's what Boyle's Law is telling us. So you are responsible for understanding conceptually what Boyle's Law tells us. You're also responsible for using the set of equations that go with Boyle's Law. So the general equation was provided to you on the front of worksheet 2, saying that the starting pressure, in other words, P1, multiplied by the starting volume, in other words, V1, of a gas is always going to be equal to P2, the ending volume, excuse me, the ending pressure, times V2, the ending volume of a gas. And if you're relatively comfortable with algebra, you can see that we could solve this basic general equation for any of the four variables, P1, V1, P2, or V2, giving us four different versions of the same equation. If you're not comfortable with algebra, you're going to be all right because there is a gas laws cheat sheet at the very front of this packet near the periodic reference tables. Um, and the upper left corner of that cheat sheet is labeled Boyle's Law, and it gives you the four different versions of Boyle's Law solved for the different variables. So you'll want to have that handy so you can refer to it, and we are going to fill in some example problems. All right? So... Uh, example problem number one it says we have a sample of gas that has a volume of 20 liters at 0 degrees Celsius and 1520 torr. You need to be familiar with these different units, right? Torr is a unit of pressure. So that means that so far they have told us that our starting volume is 20 liters, our starting temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, and our starting pressure is 1,520 torr. Pulling the information out of the problem. It wants to know what would the volume be when we get to still zero degrees Celsius, so constant temperature, which tells us we're doing Boyle's Law problems here. But now our pressure is 760 torr. So we've decreased the pressure. Right, which if we think about Boyle's Law conceptually means that we should be increasing the volume. So we don't know exactly what V2 is, but we know it should be bigger than 20 liters. So we are going to need to find the version of Boyle's Law that solves for V2. So if we look at our gas laws cheat sheet, that says that V2 equals P1 times V1 divided by P2. So we'll just plug in our numbers. 1,520 times 20 divided by 
760, all right? Um, you want to be a little careful with order of operations. Depending on how sophisticated your calculator is, you may need to put parentheses around the top numbers so that that multiplication gets done first, and then you're dividing by the 760. Um, but you should get 40. And because we're solving for volume, we need to look at what units have been established in this problem for volume. They were liters, and so those are the units that we need to put on our final answer and we're going to box it. All right. Okay. Uh, next question. A sample of gas has a volume of 12 liters at 25 degrees Celsius and 0.5 atmospheres of pressure. So again, you need to be able to recognize the different units of pressure. Again, they want to know what's the new volume going to be when it's still at 25 degrees Celsius. All these problems, since they're all defined as Boyle's Law problems, should have constant temperatures. But now we've got two atmospheres of pressure. So since our pressure is increasing from P1 to P2, we'd expect our volume to be decreasing, right? So our final volume should be less than 12. So we're going to use the same version of the equation. We won't always although you'll find a lot of these problems do solve for a final volume. Um, so we're going to do our 0 0.5 times uh, 12 divided by 2. And again, try putting these into your calculator with me um, because you want to make sure that you are figuring out the correct way to enter this into your calculator so your calculator knows the order of operations. All right. Um, so we get an answer of 3, and again, we have established that we're using liters as our units for volume. So those are going to be our units for our final answer. Okay? All right. Next one. A 60 milliliter, so we're not using liters, but milliliters now, sample of gas at 40 pounds per square inch. Remember that um, pounds per square inch here, we can abbreviate as PSI, that's another unit, okay? Suddenly experiences a pressure drop to standard pressure. Oh, so we need to go back to our gas laws cheat sheet or worksheet number one if we don't remember what standard pressure is. Standard pressure, right, can either be one atmosphere, it can be 760 torr, or 14.7 PSI. Since P1 was already established as being in PSI, pounds per square inch, we don't have a choice. We can't use 1 for P2, for our standard pressure. We can't use 760. We have to be consistent with our units. So we have to use 14.7 PSI. Okay? Um, and they're saying that the temperature remains constant the whole time at 25 degrees Celsius. So that tells us both our T1 and our T2. And they want to know the new volume. So again, same version of the equation. In your homework, sometimes you'll be solving for maybe P2 or P1. You're not always going to solve for V2. Okay. Um, so we've got 40 times 60 divided by 14.7. So again, try to put these in your calculator with me so that you get used to how to enter them. Right? And I get 163.27. Yeah, that seems right. I mean, our pressure went down, so our volume should go up. Um, and this time our units are going to be milliliters. Okay? All right, uh, we're going to do one last one here, and then you guys are going to finish the rest in class. So we have a sample of gas, and its pressure is 2 atmospheres, a uh, volume of 400 milliliters, and a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. We want to know the new volume, still at a constant temperature, of course, but this time at 5 atmospheres of pressure. So if the pressure is going up, we'd expect the volume to go down. So 2 times 400 
divided by 5. <sighs> Gives us 160 milliliters. So our pressure went up, our volume went down, and that is our final answer. Okay? So um, these are pretty straightforward. The kind of key thing is to make sure that your units are consistent, whatever units you establish for pressure, temperature, and volume to begin with is what you have to end with. Um, and if they tell you that the pressure changes to standard pressure, that's telling you a specific number. It means you have to pick one of these numbers depending on which unit the problem is establishing pressure in. Uh, same with on your homework. Sometimes it might say, it wasn't in one of these examples, but on your homework you'll see um, there might be a change to STP, standard pressure and temperature. Okay, well, STP then would be telling you information about T2 and P2, right? The standard temperature and the st standard pressure values are listed both on that gas laws cheat sheet down at the bottom and also in worksheet one we read about them. So just um, don't lose sight of that. Some people will come in and tell me, oh, I couldn't solve this problem. There wasn't enough information. But I will promise you right now, none of these problems are problems where there wasn't enough information to solve. If you're thinking there's not enough information, you're probably forgetting that standard pressure or standard temperature or STP actually means specific numbers, and you just have to go and look them up if you don't have them memorized. Okay? So we will work on the rest of these problems when you get to class next.